Welcome to my channel. We're going to value three stocks in this video. The first is Teva Pharmaceuticals, and this is the largest generic drug manufacturer in the world. This company has a market cap of $10.5 billion, and they're trading at $9.49 a share. And the way you calculate the shares outstanding is you take the market cap divided by the stock price, that gives you the shares outstanding. We're going to need this number when we calculate the stock price later. Let's look at the company's financials. Free cash flow. This is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flow and then you discount that number back to today. And that's what we're doing in this video. I'm going to show you how I calculate the future free cash flow and how I come up with the discount rate. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. If a company has positive free cash flow, that means it's generating more cash than it's spending. But some companies have negative free cash flow if they're investing a lot in their business. They had over $4 billion of free cash flow in 2016, but that's been going down. So it is possible that they're investing in their business because they are a drug manufacturer and drug manufacturers have a lot of upfront costs. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement and they have pretty big negatives in three years. Net income is an accounting number, so it's not actual cash. So the good thing is they're generating positive free cash flow. Their revenue seems to be slipping a bit, but still $17 billion is a pretty big number. Let's look at a capital structure so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. This company took on $27 billion of debt. They pay 3.3% interest on the debt. They have 66% debt in their capital structure. The rest is equity, 34% equity. And to get the cost of equity, we need to get the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a beta of 1.58. So the stock moves about one and a half times the market. And to calculate the cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model. The higher the beta, the higher the cap M. Their cost of equity is 14 and a half percent. So the weighted average cost of capital is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. That's 7.1%. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 28 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital, that's in green. We get a value of the company of $32 billion. We divide that by 1.1 billion shares, and we come up with a calculated intrinsic stock price of $30. So they're trading at a 68% discount. So it's a pretty strong buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 29 a share, almost exactly what I calculate. I'm usually not this close to Simply Wall Street. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So it looks like it was trading in the 60s a few years back, but it's kept dropping year after year. So it seems like a really great value. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, great price to sales, great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.6. So investors are paying 60 cents for $1 revenue. This is an amazing ratio, but they need to convert their revenue to profit. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.8. So investors are paying 80 cents for $1 book value. A book value per share of 12.63 indicates that if the company went bankrupt today, it would be able to give each shareholder $12.63. So it's like you're investing with no risk. A low current ratio, a bad ROE, and a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can almost cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I did a video on Pasira. They're in the same industry as Teva. And both have negative PE, but Teva has a better PE. Teva is much better in price to sales and price to book, but Pasira is better in current ratio. They have a better ROE, although it's negative, and they're a little lower in debt at 46 compared to Teva's 66. But Teva is much bigger of a company at 10.5 billion market cap. 
The next company we're going to look at is Huntington Ingalls. This is America's largest military shipbuilding company. And they have a market cap of $6.1 billion, so they're a mid-cap company, and they're trading at $150 a share. And they have positive, healthy, free cash flows every year. The net income also looks really good. It's positive and pretty consistent. And their revenue is increasing every year, so the financials look really good. They have $1.3 billion of debt. They pay about 5.5% interest on the debt and their cost of debt is 4.4%. And the way you calculate that is you take the interest rate on the debt times one minus the effective tax rate. 45% of that capital structure is debt, the rest is equity, 55% equity. And to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. So that beta moves with the market, 1.04. And the cost of equity is 10.3%. The weighted average cost of capital is 7.65%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. That's here in blue. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 9.2 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of $9 billion. We divide that by 41 million shares. And we get a calculated intrinsic stock price of 218. So they're also trading at a discount, a 31% discount. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 267. So they're even higher than me. Simply Wall Street takes the average analyst estimate. Let's see where the stock has been trading. It looks like it was trading much higher, 260, 270 before coronavirus, but then it's dropped quite a bit. It hasn't come up like most stocks. Another stock that seems like a great value. Let's look at the financial ratios. Great PE, great price to sales, and a decent price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 11. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.7. Price to book is stock price over book value per share and they have a 3.9. I like to see below 3.5, but that's not too bad. They have a weak current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, and a great ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they're a little shy in covering their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. They have a great ROE. I like to see above 20%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can easily cover their interest payments. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Boeing, BWX Technology, CAE, Airbus, FTG, General Dynamics, Ruger, Raytheon, and Spirit Aerosystems, all in the same industry as Huntington. And if Huntington has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse than the average in PE. Even though they have a good PE, the average in the industry is 5.5. They're better than average in price to sales, worse than average in price to book and current ratio, but they're better in debt and ROE. The average market cap in the industry is 27 billion, they're at 6.1 billion. The last company we're gonna look at is GraphTech International. This company is a manufacturer of graphite electrodes and petroleum coke. These are essential for the production of steel and other metals. They're a small cap company, market cap 1.8 billion, stock price 664. And free cash flows, it was negative in 2016, but they pulled it together and had a great 2018 and 19. Net income was also struggling in 2016, but in 2018 and 19, it looks really good. Their revenue has quadrupled from 2016 to 2019. That's amazing growth. They have $1.8 billion of debt, and they pay 6.8% interest on the debt. The cost of debt is 6% and they're 100% debt because they have negative equity in their capital structure. That means their liabilities are greater than their assets. Since they're 100% debt, the cost of debt is their weighted average cost of capital, 6%, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $2.6 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital that's here in green. We get a value of the company of $3.5 billion. We divide that by 268 million shares and we get an intrinsic calculated stock price of $13. They're trading at 664, so they're trading at a 50% discount. 
Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $20, so they're saying the stock is worth even more than what I'm saying. Let's see where it's trading. It looks like another stock that's been driven down over the years. So once again, I think this is a really great value. Let's look at the financial ratios. Great PE, great price to sales, and negative price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 2.4. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.0. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. And they have negative equity. So they have negative book value and negative price to book. A good current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, and no ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. Since they have negative equity, we can't look at their ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. And this is the only company I've done in this industry, so I can't compare them to anyone. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll definitely answer. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.